we're at a very pivotal time in our species. And it's because the convergence of the technology, uh, the human and the drugs. So the technology, the drugs and the human are coming together to create interdimensional interstellar travel and states of consciousness which can be induced through drugs specifically used with technology interacting we're not going to know the difference between virtual reality and reality at some point we're going to get so sophisticated in terms of how we can create states of consciousness but not through your normal spiritual yogic breathing through drugs induced and technology. I'm not sure if this has ever occurred before, but we're entering into this world and we don't know. I mean, what happens if you can do interstellar travel? I don't even want to call it interstellar. I mean, I don't know about you, but you can take some drugs and you can go into some different places. You can go to different dimensions. You can, it's, there's a world, there are worlds out there very different from this world when you go inside. And, you know, most of the spiritual traditions speak about this and they use drugs. They, use mushrooms, they use biological stimulants to create a state of consciousness where you are very much different than normal human. Now, Terence McKenna and other such psychonauts were exploring in the 60s and 70s, and I mean, humans have been doing it all over the planet, always. But there's this sort of big change, shift, transformation, whatever you want to call it, where now as human beings, everybody you know, has access to certain tech, everyone has access to certain drugs and everyone is a human being. So the exploration within consciousness is going to be the ticket or the most interesting thing for humans because i mean we've sort of seen that you can have all the wealth you want you can have i mean if you, if you have if you're drinking water at some point you don't need a lake you know to to sort of own to drink the water at some point you have too much of something it makes it worse and so there's been such a, a grab for material possessions you know in this world or on this planet for thousands of years or hundreds hundreds of thousands of years or millions of years or whatever the, however long it is but there's this divide between people who see this acquisition of material possessions and getting whatever whatever it is you need i guess in big amounts versus people who are taking a and i, I want there's another divide, like there's a spiritual path and then there's just sort of exploration now explorers they may not be going okay well you know I, I believe in god and i better you know dot my eyes and cross my t's on the cross or do, do whatever spiritual tradition you have i think explorers are are people who are, are a little bit different than sort of religious or spiritual aspirants and then that's what's kind of merging a bit in in a sense that a lot of religious people may not take drugs, but if they had a DMT trip, they may experience something far more powerful than anything they, they got from the churches or the books or whatever they've been doing all their lives. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you have this oneness with God that is, is, you know, changes your life completely. And then you go back to reading the books or talking with, to people or doing your prayers, but it ain't the same, is it? And so the, the, the younger generation is, is having these experiences and festivals with, you know, some 
good drugs. I mean, there's a lot of negativity about drugs in, in, and for good reason in terms of addiction and, and what it's doing to people. But the, you know, there's always a positive and a negative. The positive side is it, it, it gives access to different dimensions. And if you've never done drugs and never experienced this, you can say, oh, that doesn't happen or it doesn't matter or whoever. But that's, <laughs> you don't wanna throw this one away. I mean, if you've ever had a, a, another dimensional experience, it's freaking amazing. I mean, it's, it's like, if you look at the top five events of your life, these events are gonna be there. Like you, there, there's, you can have a, like every molecule in the room is staring at you and talking to you. Like they don't talk about that in school. <laughs> they don't brief, brief you in the job description going, oh yeah, and by the way, you may have to actually talk to this being that you think is God at some point, right? Like, this isn't normal stuff, but it's within the fabric of our society and it's at, in the hearts and minds of most people on the planet in that we all want to have beautiful experiences. We all want to have mystical experience. We all want to have something that is more than what we currently have. And if you can give it to somebody by just giving them a pill, well, I think a lot of humans are going to take that pill. And the experiences are so incredible. That's where addiction or, or something can come in where you're going, I want that experience because compared to my regular life, it's so exciting. It's so beautiful. Like I, I, I'm a different person. And I'm not, this doesn't seem to be talked about a lot. I mean, we, we look at drug addiction from the point of view of trauma. We look at drug addiction from the point of view of, of the negative side. But there's also the positive side of drug addiction. I'm not saying positive, but we're just saying like, why do people do these drugs? They're doing it to get a different state of being. They're doing it to try something out. And so, you know, our species is sort of split. We're splitting between people who, let's say, never do drugs and say, okay, I'm not going to do drugs, but they, they may take pharmaceutical drugs. They may take medicines. They may take herbs but they say, I'm not going to do uh, drugs versus people who have no problem with drugs and explore and test and, <clears throat> and play with a lot of different sort of chemistries to induce a certain state. And I think that, you know, if you've ever, you know, if, if, if you're my age and, you, and you've never done any drugs, <laughs> I'd suggest you know, go try some. There's a reason that people try them. I mean, I take it, what's a, you, you take a drug that makes you feel more loving. All of a sudden you love everybody in their own. You go through your whole life and you're, you're small and you're, you're thinking about yourself and you're not that open. And then one day, one pill, and boom. All of a sudden you're loving everybody. And that feeling is beautiful. I mean, all these drugs, if you could say, I want to feel that way all the time, a lot of people would go, okay, I'm in, click. But it's always induced by some sort of chemistry. So when you bring in technology now, and you bring in virtual reality, and at some point being able to uh, access the feelings in virtual reality, through some induced machinery and then adding drugs in and you know within a hundred years i don't know what's going to happen in the next hundred years but virtual reality for the most part i think at some point is going to replace reality i mean you can see it in the games kids are just playing games you give kids these games these days there the games are a thousand times better than normal life that's why they play all the time that's why you can't get them off the screens it's because their mind is engaged in a way that normal life doesn't do it. I'm not saying it's better. I don't think it's a good idea for kids to be always on the, the, the screens. And I think we can create a much better life for them by 
by bringing nature in and balancing life with the screens. But I mean, I don't think, you know, there's government and corporate and the media and the, the interpretation of what is happening is so sort of uh, limited. It's very limited. And we, we have the possibility of so much creativity now with the advent of virtual reality. Like if you look at the card game Magic, and I don't know if you play, played that game Magic, but I mean, it's the it's best card, card game on the planet. And as soon as Magic becomes virtual reality and you're a wizard, you're throwing fireballs and you're bringing your armies on, onto the field and you're this wizard and, and, you, and you're in this virtual reality game and you're playing against another wizard and nobody gets hurt but you have all this great fun i mean that is going to be you know where everyone is going to put their attention at some point people may not think so but within 20 years think about the gaming world with virtual reality what's going to happen i mean there's going to be a whole bunch of people on couches with things stuck in their head, drugged up in these other worlds, having these incredible lives in those other worlds, but just lying there like a couch potato and someone comes in and they think they're dead, but they're gonna be playing, you know, th these games like, I don't know, we're gonna go, we're going into a very weird part of reality. And um, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen. I just hope that we have a real, true spiritual awakening so that humans can find a good life. I, I wonder how that's gonna happen with all these insane psychopaths at the top levels of our species who seem to wanna control us in the ways they do. I mean, that, that's gotta end, so I don't know.